it's Leslie and Lee, Hello. your letters coordinators, and we are going to take a few minutes to just go through the phonemic awareness routines that are in Canyon's skill-based small group manual, plus a couple of others, just in case you would like to see some demonstrations in order to implement them with your class. Our learning intention for this session is to learn about phonological awareness routines and activities so we can use them in our classroom with students to build their ability to hear and manipulate the sounds in words in the English language. We'll know we're successful when we can use the routines and activities with our students to build PA skills that will build fluency in reading connected text and spelling. All the majority of these routines can be found in the CSD skill-based small group manual. If you don't have the manual or if you'd like to see the online version, you can access it in the same place as the maps at manuals.isd.canyonsdistrict.org. It's just there on the shelf underneath the grade level maps. So feel free to look them up there. Also, uh, many of you received the routine cards if you participated in the academies over the last few years. And as you're going to unit two of letters, you might see Lynn Kuhn reference some of these routines in our routine cards. And if you'd like a copy, you can let us know the day of your letters training and we'll print them out for you. And that is a link. That slide is a direct link to the manual if you, if you want to use it that way. Okay, the first routines, can you put that up there? The first routines we are going to go over are things that you can use sticky notes for. So this is my whiteboard, which is not really a whiteboard at all. It's a book with a cardstock over it, but we're pretending it's a whiteboard for today. <laughs> so the first activity would be words and sentences. And the idea is that you want for kids to be able to identify how many words are in a sentence so they can it it especially for our multilingual students it helps them understand so you can use a sticky to represent each word in a sentence twinkle twinkle little star and there you have it that is words in a sentence very simple routine you would want to say the sentence, repeat the sentence, have the kids say the sentence twice. You want them to repeat everything twice in all these routines. Another routine would be syllables in words that can be represented with sticky notes. So if you say target, the word is target. What's the word everybody target? And then you ask them to put a sticky for each syllable target you clap the word you can put it on your hands you can put it on your arm you can do whatever you want with it and then put a sticky on their desk on their whiteboard these are all flexible routines you cannot do this wrong and then the idea is to have them read the syllables no they're not reading any letters at all but they will say target target and the fluency piece of that is actually going back and reading the word the next routine is a first sound routine, and this is where you isolate only the first sound. It is not the onset, it is the first sound. So in a word like moon, you say, what is the first sound? Say the word moon, everybody says the word moon this many times. What is the first sound in moon? The first sound is m, mm, so they would put a sticky here, and the rest of the word is un, m, mm, un, read it, moon. The next one is onset and rhyme, and with onset and rhyme, the onset is everything before the vowel. So in a word like stop, the onset is st, and then the vowel is op, and so you would have op, being the rhyme. So in order to represent that with sticky notes, you would do something like this. The onset is st, and the rhyme is op. St, st, 
op, stop. Okay, so those are your sticky note, note routines. And you can also do a variation on the one. Um, if you wanted to, if you have a three syllable word, um, like instrument, you could have them put the sticky notes in the word instrument. What's the word instrument? Now say instrument, but say it again, but don't say meant, instra. So you could do that. You have to eliminate the first or the last syllable in that because you can't eliminate the middle syllable. It's impossible to do, so don't try. Okay? Good luck. <laughs>
uh, until you just are out of words and start a new sentence with a new group of kids. This would work really great in small group or even kids could build them with their partners as a partner activity. Uh, really important to correct those errors though that they might go for the rhyme instead of the alliteration. So just correct them. We need a word that begins with the sound S. So that's another fun way to do it. And this is also something that can be done at any point in the day when you're lining up for lunch. You can say uh, Levi's lunch and have a kid add the next one or uh, any chaining activity that you're doing throughout the day would work most of the day. So just a few ways to bring PA throughout your day. Okay, the next one is the tracking mat and you, you can use a mat. You could make a mat and have it laminated so they can keep it in their desk if you wanted to. Or again, my handy dandy whiteboard, which is not really a whiteboard at all. Um, but you can see how basic these things are. So for a, a chaining activity, the, the major rule, the most important thing is that you change one sound at a time. So one sound, it can be any of the sounds in the word, but you can only make one change at a time. So if we start with pod, the word is pod. What's the word, everybody? The pod. word is pod. You're going to say it two times. And then your stickies will represent the word pod. P uh, d. And if you want to, you can turn the vowel so that it is going a different direction um, and represent it that way. And then I say, what do you have? The old word is pod, pod. The new word is sod. What's the new word? Sod. The old word is pod, pod. We're going to change it to sod. What are you going to do? Take the sorry, and change it to a sod. So there you have sod, sod. Then you would change it to mod. Ah, d is the old word, old, new, m, ah, d. So I'm going to use this because I only have that many stickies right here. So there's my ah, and I want to use m, ah, d, and I, oh, I'm going to use this one again. Then you can change, so there's my chain. You can change then the, the end sound. So if you change it to mad, you would change the medial sound or mat would be the ending sound. So just, you can go through and do these and have the kids build them. There are no letters involved. Once you involve letters, then you're talking about phonics and not PA. So just keep it with stickies and each, each represents one sound. A key thing that you need to know is if you want to build a word like mom, you need to have the same color stickies at the beginning and the end. Mm, ah, mm, because the same color represents the same sound. Okay. All right. So that is a tracking mat and you change one sound at a time. I like the tracking mats because they that's a nice scaffold for those kiddos who can't keep the words in their memory long enough to do chaining just orally. So the tracking mat helps them keep track of which sounds they are uh, saying and gives them the multi-sensory uh, repetition of what the sounds were. So if you are using chaining a whole class, but you have a couple of kiddos that just aren't getting it, this is a really great small group activity to help those kids. Okay. This is me, right? Yep. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> this is what is the first sound. And you can use just about anything for the first sound. So I am using this 
picture. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's from um, I Want an Iguana, which is one of my favorite stories. So what you are going to do is you can use anything. You could use your vocabulary, story cards. You could use the, um, the, the picture that's on the day one of your reading street with the concept um, board. You could use your EL uh, picture that comes in reading street that has, you know, it's a picture that has all kinds of stuff going on in it. They're great for this kind of thing. So I am going to say, first I'm going to segment. So I'm going to say the sounds in a word and you're going to blend it and you're blending. So I'm going to say the sounds and you are going to blend it. The first word is, wait, I'm saying the sounds. The first sounds are m, mm, a, n. Mm. What's the word? Man. Yay, good job, Leslie, you blended that so well. The next word is ish, word? Ish. Good job, Leslie. The next word is sp, u, n, word? Spoon. Very good. Now you wanna do it the opposite way. I'm gonna say the word, you're gonna tell me the sound. The word is pink. What's the word? Or pink. what are the sounds? Pink. Pink. Very good. Noodle. 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 Great. So any any picture will work. Um, and you just choose things in the picture. You segment them and you blend them. So the kids have to do it both ways and they're opposites. All right, the next one is syllables. How many syllables? It's also similar. So if you use pictures, it's great to use pictures and you could use them from a lot of the same places that Lee just mentioned, or you can just give them the words, but it works very similarly. The teacher's gonna say the word, have the students repeat, and then segment the word. So picnic, what's the word? Picnic. Picnic. It's uh, clap it, pick. Nick, how many syllables? Two. Two. So it's important to let our kids start to break apart syllables, especially as they're getting to that multisyllabic word level. So any way you can familiarize themselves with that and have them count it out, whatever the routine is, whether you want them clapping it, whether you want them putting their hand on their chin, whether you want them moving it down their arm, just give them a visual so they have that multisensory memory to help break the word apart as well. Okay, so phoneme segmenting and blending is the routine that I just did. And what I was supposed to be doing was first sound. <laughs> so I am really sorry about that. Um, but we're going to do the same type of thing. So we'll go back to on the slide to the first sound. There we go. So here's how you do first sound, which is what I was supposed to do before. Sorry. <laughs> So first sound goes like this. It's very similar. Um, I'm going to say the word, and then you are going to say the first sound, and then the rest of the word. The word is noodle. First sound? Mm. Oodle. Very good. The word is fish. First sound? Ish. The word is spoon. First sound? Spoon. Now I'm going to say the first sound, and you're going to tell me the word. Uh, ink. Pink. Air. Hair. Exactly. So you're isolating that first sound. Awesome. All right. Now we are finger stretching. This is probably one the majority of you are familiar with, so we'll just really quick put it up on my screen so I can read it too. Really quick, we just want to get kids, again, used to hearing those individual sounds, but also having an action to show you that they're making connection to the sounds. So having a routine where you have a gesture tied to it will be really important for you to evaluate if the kids are getting it. So it doesn't have to be the finger. It could be a punch. It could be knees, hips, shoulders, but something 
so that they're showing you that segmenting, but we're going to do the practice with our fingers. So the word is net. What's the word net? Let's sound it out. N -et. What's the word net? Something else important to remember if you are using your fingers, that you are remembering your directionality, that you're moving from left to right as students read so that they don't get confused. I have seen that if you tell them, oh, you're missing this sound, but you're going backwards and they replace the wrong sound or fix the wrong sound. So do remember to keep your directionality. All right, the next one is the Say It and Move It card. And you did get a copy of this, or you will if you haven't been to your letters at Unit 2 Letters. So you can just make copies of these for your kids. And down here in the little pool, you would put some chips, or you could do the stickies like Lee suggested earlier to follow the pattern. And sorry, my screen went one too far, so I couldn't see. Okay, <laughs> the pattern is pretty similar to everything else, but with the scaffold for kids to do the movement so they help with the memory, with the muscle memory. So I'm going to say the word. I'm going to say Sam. Students repeat the word Sam. Then we're going to segment it by pushing up chips or sticky. So let's segment. What's the word? Sam. Push it up. Ah, mm, Sam. So we get that memory and are uh, experiencing some manipulatives to help with that memory as well. Excellent. And the last one today we're going to talk about is the alphabet mat arc. And there are approximately 28 billion things you can do with this. Um, and it does cross into um, combining your phonics with phonemic awareness. So basically the purpose of phonemic awareness is to support fluent reading and spelling. So in order to do that, you need letters. So that's, that's a critical tie between PA and phonics is if it has letters, it's actually technically phonics. Without letters, then it's completely strictly PA. So um, the alpha arc can embed the PA to support the spelling of words in that if you have plastic letters, you can use those plastic letters and you don't have to have all 26 for all 26 of your kids. Um, you can select specific letters that they have been taught or if you're focusing on say the SH digraph, you could choose SH and several vowels or even all of the vowels probably and several um, consonants. Yes, you do have to be careful because there are some um, tricky, dangerous words that can happen by combining them or leaving kids to their own, uh, you know, whatever. But so you do have to manage it carefully and plan. Um, so the idea with the alpha arc is you can do, and you will get, again, a handout when you go to your letters training with a list of activities, but you can, you can match the letters, you can match lowercase to uppercase, you can name the letters, you can go through the alpha arc with letter sounds, you can then bring those letters down from the arc and create words. So if you give them, um, certain letters you could say now we're going to build a word the word is fig what's the word everybody fig yay <laughs> yes the word is fig what word fig the first sound in fig is what yes find what letter spells the sound f and <laughs> yes find your f and pull it into your first square the next sound and you go through the word that way build the word and then read the word put the letters back and go on to your next word. So there's, there's lots and lots of things you can do and you can combine chips in that activity. So if you wanted to do um, the sounds in fig are fig and have them then move chips into the squares and then transition to the letters, you can do that as well. So there's the whole point of all of this, like I said, is to build fluency because we don't we don't do this in our everyday life 
This is, this is a means to the end of being able to read fluently and write fluently. So it's, um, it's a skill that we need to practice and that you can really have fun with and, and kids love it. And um, so we will, we'll continue on our letters journey. And if you have any questions, um, we are more than happy to help in any way that we can and good luck with your PA. And just, I would just like to add, try to find times throughout the day, not just in your foundations block, to bring PA in, like we talked about morning circles, but also anytime you're doing vocabulary, it would be great to start with doing the syllables, breaking it apart the syllables, and then pulling apart the sounds, and then showing them the words, because that's just going to help the kids remember the word more, put it in their working memory. So anytime you can bring PA in throughout your day, we strongly encourage it. Have a great day. So long. See you next unit.